So I'm here with Sarah Thompson, who's standing again for uh, election for sports president. Yep. Why are you restanding? I've absolutely loved this year. Um, I've had the most fun I think I've ever had doing something and found something that I really, really love. Um, and it's definitely a career I want to continue. So it seemed like a good way. And also it's been such a successful year for Saint Sport as well. Um, and the work that we've done, I really think the foundations have been laid in another year of continuity could just be huge for us. So it's not just because no one else is running? No, absolutely not. Um, it was something when I went back to South Africa um, to check up on this volunteering project and to find out some other kind of scope out some other projects. Um, it was something that occurred to me then in January um, and ever since it's kind of been playing on my mind and it, it's definitely somewhere that I want to end up working so this seems like the perfect opportunity. So your manifesto seems to focus on uh, three very specific things. One of these is transport provisions. Yep. Do you want to explain what you want to do about that? Yeah, so we spent a lot of time at exec meetings this year kind of sorting out transport and sports grown exponentially over the past few years. Um, and it doesn't seem like the current transport provision and the way that it's set up can kind of cope. So I think we've already started looking into a better way of doing things, but I think just having the summer, no learning curve, knowing what I'm doing, I would have the summer to spend on that so when the students come back, um, there's a transport system that is fit for purpose. How much is that going to cost though? Ideally, it'll cost the same as what we're looking at. It's not, I'm not looking at buying new cars unless we absolutely have to. It's finding a new way of doing it, whether it's long-term leases, whether it's university carpools, there are a load of other opportunities. What are the problems then that you're facing at the moment? So at the moment we hire from Arnold Clark um, and because they're in Dundee and they have quite a small branch they can't fulfil the needs, all our needs at the weekends so they'll only give us a set number of cars. Um, so maybe there are, we're looking at other ways of doing things so that we can provide for all our clubs um, that way. You also talk about reviewing academic flexibility but you don't really uh, say how you're going, what you're going to do. With that. So again, this is something the academic flexibility policy was set up maybe about four or five years ago um, and sport again has grown exponentially and this is something that I've been working on with the proctor, sort of started, decided that there are so many people applying for academic flexibility for mornings on a Wednesday if they have matches away or if they have an early start time and they need to get out of class a bit earlier. At the moment it's set at one o'clock on a Wednesday and there are no compulsory classes after that. But this is kind of looking if there's a way of, it's never going to be a blanket, everyone who does sport gets out of class on a Wednesday because we have five and a half thousand students doing sport and that's just not feasible. But working with departments and I think by working with directors of teaching and promoting sport internally so that people really realise um, the benefits of it and the importance of it. Durham have a great model set up um, where they have one guy who's in charge of recruitment and he has great links with every single department and he can phone people up and sort of flagging systems for incoming students. So that kind of thing, really putting sport on the map and sort of letting people know that it is a growing thing in St Andrews. Another thing that I didn't know about, but apparently you've changed kit provider. Yes. Uh, what's the situation with that? So we changed kit supplier um, this time last year and moved to O'Neill's um, and it hasn't worked on either side. Um, O'Neill's haven't been able to provide clubs with what we want, um, what they need. They've had horrendous waiting times, the quality's been really poor. Um, and one of the things I was determined to do this year was to make this work because we don't want to be changing kit supplier every year. We want mm. to build a really strong brand and that doesn't work if we have students walking around in different kit. Um, so I worked really hard with O'Neill's and with the retail store to try and make this work, but in the end they just couldn't offer us what we needed, so we've made the decision to go to a new kit supplier. And I think normally when we change, it comes at this time, which is sort of towards the end of a presidency, so just it's getting set up, there's a new person in the door, and I think having that consistency and that one point of contact means we can hold another company much more accountable, we can make sure that the students get exactly what they need, that the leisure wear for other students to buy is exactly what they need, um, so yeah, that's hugely important and something that we desperately want to get right. And you're confident that they're not going to uh, have the same problems as your previous supplier? That's what we try to every single time. We've changed kit suppliers. We're kind of infamous for changing kit suppliers, unfortunately, because they just haven't worked. But I think having that consistency at the start could just be the thing that makes is it, a real is difference. Is there not some other long-term solution that you could maybe find to that, some kind of contract that you have with this kit supplier? That well, that's what we're looking at, okay. um, is getting a more robust contract in place so that they are more accountable. Um, but it's very hard to set things up if you're dealing with one person for a few months when you're setting things up and suddenly that changes and the person who comes in doesn't know what's going on, mm -hmm. is learning the, all of the role, let alone just kit and how to negotiate that. So I think this could be key in setting up a long-term solution. 
So you've been president for uh, kind of three quarters of your term yeah. now. What would you say are your biggest achievements? Um, getting more people involved in sport. Um, How many more? We have, last year I think, we didn't have online memberships last year. Um, so we didn't have an accurate record, but we reckon we've increased sport participation by a good couple of thousand. Um, so we're able to keep a track of that now. Um, communication and working with the union and other uh, bodies around the university has been fantastic. Um, you're really lucky to work with a great team of SABs, um, which has made it really special. The alumni stuff that we've been doing has been great. The alumni weekend that's coming up in May has been really well received by alumni. It's something that we haven't seen before. So we've got societies, subcommittees, sports clubs all putting on things across a one weekend. So the idea is that everyone will just descend on St Andrews and friends who do sport will be back, but also friends from halls who do mermaids or anything like that. They'll all be back in one place for one weekend. So it should be really special. Well, Sarah Thompson, thank you very much for the interview. No problem.